minute and a half after the bell rang. Um, <laughs> Duly noted on here. Yeah, I don't have an evaluation. Greg says he's So first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there any modifications to the agenda? Is the um, is the executive session to talk about you? Okay. We're good then. All right. I didn't have anything to add, so I move we accept the agenda as you Second. Okay, all in favor? Fine. Right. Open it up to public comment or inquiry. And anybody here for discussion on anything other than what's on the agenda this evening? I just have uh, one comment before we get to the budget. Uh, after the big heavy snowstorm we had in November, there were a bunch of folk and branches and limbs along my road. Uh, I had to go and move about five or six of them myself because they really stuck out too far. And it, you know, if a car coming along, I can move over to have somebody come in the opposite direction, these branches might have whacked the car. Uh, after the windstorm of a week or two ago, whenever it was, I had to do the same thing. And now today, there's a wind along the side of my road. So I would like to ask that after one of these major storms, Somebody drives the road and removes these branches. We must have somebody that. <clears throat> yeah. Whoever's well, really looking for it, they typically do. They try to cut it back to the road. Yeah. Um, but those apparently have, they didn't get them, so I'll, I'll make a note and scout them out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, after all the storms, even tonight, they're going to be out and they're going to have chainsaws in the trucks so that when they see something, they, they cut it back. They don't cut it way back, they cut it back right about the Is it a case of the condition of the trees that you have on that road, or is it just the well, seasonality of the storms? Well, it's because severe storms. Yeah. And the wind is very high, so yeah. there's more of an incident of this happening than normally. Just didn't know if maybe some of the trees are not in, you know, very good condition that maybe well, would that heavy take a little extra spring. Well, remember the power was out. Was yeah. The yeah. power was out for three days. Yeah. So I think that would be... <coughs> I still see storm. Someone just has on a nice day. Somebody can. Well, they spent like after that one more old tree, but now they spent three days out with chainsaws, cutting back limbs and things. But you know, it's not going issue with the trees that we have. So um, I'll just reiterate that you can take a look. Like I said, they all they all have chainsaws in the truck, so that if a tree's down or there's a limb that's sticking out, they can do damage. They try to get out. Anything else? Hearing none, <clears throat> we'll move on. Uh, everybody's okay with it. We can move forward with Rick's appointment. You're good with that, or you want to wait an extra 15 minutes? Or... No, that's <laughs> Means you're here. <laughs> good to see you guys on this uh, blustery evening. Uh, just my follow-up visit, as I mentioned, I'd be back just before town meeting. <clears throat> Any little loose ends here. Great. Uh, make things if we were as smooth as possible. Um, and I first one to, I assume you guys are running for re-election this year. If you are, it's helpful to have someone ready to nominate, just so we don't have an awkward moment there where no one's saying anything. So just wanted to mention that, have someone ready to, to do that for you. Um, and then uh, in the discussion, um, well, I guess before that, I, I was wondering if uh, regarding town agent and grand juror this year, um, I believe we reelected that lady last year. I'm not sure. If you know, town agents, both of these positions are kind of figureheads. Um, I know Deb was, when she was practicing law, she was a little more involved in some of the goings on. Um, I know she had been at some grievance hearings and that sort of thing representing the town. Um, but we might want to consider 
and, and now she's changed professions. She's in the medical field. I don't even know how she feels about holding that position. But we might give that some thought between now and town meeting as to who might fill that in case they're needed. Well, that was one of the questions I had written down for this evening was, you know, we had talked about it a little bit as a board, but how we will address this year with some of the absentee uh, nominations, because we seemed to run into a bit of an issue last year with some individuals that were nominated from the floor that weren't there. Um, in right. one case, the person really didn't have any interest in the position. In another case, someone got overlooked somehow through the process. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. I don't think there's anything that we have in the policy that says that you can't be nominated from the floor if you're absent, but may, maybe. Um, I don't know if maybe we can give them a little guidance prior on, you know, making sure that the people that we're nominating are ones that actually want to move forward with the position. It seems like it's always the, whoever did last year, someone stands up and nominates them, and someone just seconds it, and, you know, here we go. And if nobody else gets up, then, then they're in for another year, and then you find out that they don't want to do it. Or. So who's currently the grand juror? Uh, I believe it's Laura Rabinus. And she, I know she's, that's some help. Yeah, she, she may not want to. I don't know how she is. So we should contact her. Maybe even if you know someone who might be interested, you could approach somebody. I mean, their positions generally don't do anything throughout the year, they're just necessary. Right. So right. Um, as long as you can get. You know, find someone who's willing to be nominated or accept the nomination would be great. Right. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to come along that line. Right. The website says it's a Deborah Lady. Yes, right. Good morning. She's the grand juror and she is also the town Well, that's what kind of got confused I last year. There's, there's Her name, discrepancy. Her name yes. got put in the wrong place, yeah. actually, and then she got voted in, and then we realized that it was actually the wrong office. So anyway, those two items, um, and we talked earlier, from my earlier visit, Chris, you were going to have something to say for Article 10, right. meaning the budget, <coughs> just making it clear that the following items are included in that number, so there's not confusion there. Um, at that point, can I also talk about those items at that time, or do I have to wait to another time? You can, it's relevant, so. I mean, the, the biggest communications I just want to get out to the general public is just why we are um, warning them in such a fashion. You know, these are pieces that are typically in the budget um, for most of them that, um, um, but the way we have it set up now, if we don't use the funds by June 30th, then they, then they're obsolete. Where in this case, making a reserve fund, we can carry those funds from year to year if needed. Yeah, I think that'd be appropriate that that time, but I'm probably not gonna I'm not gonna let the discussion go into particulars on this article. Right. Just a general, just a general yeah. view of why we're yeah, okay. Cause, Cause if not, I think we'll field a bunch of questions. Yeah. And it might come on at each one of them. Right. So I'm just trying to figure out how we head that off and get the information prior to tackle on each one of those. Right. So that or, or if maybe if you allow me to talk on the first one, maybe I can answer any <coughs> questions for the other three. We'll see what happens there. And during all that question and answer period, you know, it's hard when you've got a microphone there and you have someone in the audience directly mm -hmm. asking questions directly. Technically, they're supposed to go through the moderator just to make that separation so it doesn't get into uh, an an unhandling situation. So, you know, I, I let go a little bit, but I do remind people at the beginning that questions that come through the moderator makes for a clear reading. You don't necessarily have to answer every question. It's nice to me, sometimes you really don't maybe deserve an answer at this, at that point, it's not appropriate. So, um, you just want to let a question go, that's certainly fine. Um, uh, to your discretion to do that. Um, I think, you know, granted, this 
town meeting is the people's meeting. Uh, lots, it's the only time that people come to address a lot of these things. I'd like to mention that, especially this questions on the budget, you guys start working on that in, in the fall, November, December. That's the time really to be here to flush out all these minute details. So, um, so I'll. I'll address that as the question is getting a little too, too particular. Um, but, but the gist of what I'm saying is try not to get into that back and forth with someone in, in the audience, because it can get out of hand. Um, and that's really what the big items that I had uh, of concern. I'm not sure if you guys have any questions. Other than that, any, anyone wants to make pies or anything, we need pies for the, <laughs> for the coffee hour. Uh, Laura's usually had that up for us, and she's not able to do that this year, so we're a little behind the eight ball on that. Uh, put a couple of notes out. So I'll do a little uh, dissertation on the human services. Right. Um, the other quest. Right. Give a little background on that. That's good, and I'm glad that they, that <coughs> Kelly or you guys, whoever, took uh, a picture of, of the, the board in action. <laughs> yeah, because people yeah. don't necessarily realize that, even though we mentioned it. Yeah. Uh, even if they've even taken the time to look through the report, which most people do. But it was good to see that in there. Yeah. Puts a little uh, relevance yeah. to what you're doing. It's all the faces up. It helps people realize that these numbers <coughs> aren't are actually looked at and, and mm -hmm. talked over. Because as we know, the, the dependency, the, at point, some points, people want to adjust those numbers from the floor. And, and uh, there's reasons why they are what they are. Yeah. I don't want to see coach as well. Is somebody going to try to adjust the numbers from the floor? Um, we don't, but and for the human service one in particular, um, I'm not thinking of anything in particular, I'm just... You know what, well, they have the perfect right to do that. Um, it's, it's in the human service agencies, um, in particular, we've had times when, when people would like to give more or less or, or whatever, but, you know, we'd like to reiterate that these these groups have all petitioned the board to uh, or the, the, the human service agency uh, committee to um, for these for these amounts and they've taken a number and tried to divide it up equally through or whatever they've requested. So um, it's again as they've done in the past. It's just important that they know that these numbers are all what that. So, so to make the, the meeting flow well for you, Rick, when we <clears throat> when we do have questions in regards to an article, um, you know, first we'll ask a question. Um, well, I, well, you'll yeah, I feel I'll you'll give permission to ask a question, and then before any of us, maybe we'll jump in. Maybe maybe if you give us some directive, if, if you know, at that point, if we want to. Um, yeah, I usually turn to, turn to the board. Right. Kind of that way you don't get that back and forth banter that right. could, could develop. Yeah. And then once we give an answer, then if it goes back to the floor, you know, you know, I guess we'll just wait for your direction. If there's a follow-up question, question if it's relevant, or you can then I address it again. If not, we'll just let it go on to the next person. Sure. Yeah. Um, we have contacted Seth. It was Kelly that contacted me, so I will still be here again. We'll have the microphones at the table, the podium, the microphone stand. I'm not sure if Carl had requested one up front, kind of in the far corner, in case someone wanted to stand looking out. We can do that again. It did get used a little bit last year. Um, the individual microphones, cordless mics, um, we've never had good luck. Um, 
with people to run those. And so we've offered it and really had struggled getting people to actually follow through and, and do it. So we're not, we didn't mention that this year in, in any of our uh, writings. So uh, there would be one there. If, for instance, if someone's in a wheelchair or something and would like to speak, we'll, one way or another, we'll get a microphone to speak. But. So you're looking for a runner maybe to do that or help out? Or? <clears throat> well, again, we didn't make that announcement. Um, I think it worked okay without doing it. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it this year. We'll see how it goes. As I say, Seth will have enough, but we'll, we'll get it to someone if they physically can't get to the, to the microphone in the app. Uh, in the so, and there's also going to be an Australian ballot. There is a situation going on at the same time out in the lobby. For the school directors, two school directors. Uh, the school budget meeting is actually Monday at night in South Royalton. And uh, yeah, there's, that's a situation that's in flux there regarding Australian ballot. South Royalton's always done it that way, or Royalton, I should say. Um, there is an article in the in the school warning to return that back to the floor. Um, I'm not sure whether they'll South Royalton will vote for that. Um, whether, you know, depends on who's there for voters and how they feel, but they're used to doing it Australian ballot. We're not. We'll see where it goes. Mm -hmm. I'd kind of like to see it go back to the floor. But. And I think remember, they were talking about whether um, breaking it up so each town votes for their own representatives rather than voting for people you really don't have much interaction with. But um, I don't think that made it anywhere yet. <clears throat> so that's all I have tonight. I look forward to seeing you all on Tuesday. And we'll We'll see how the meeting goes. I'll say it'll be smooth and we get a lot of work done. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, need more? Uh, this is what's a little bit into the pot. Because that's all for good weather at this point. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, really quick while we have you here still, is, and this is sort of a question for you and for the board, is it worth doing sort of a public service announcement? The page um, sort of towards the front that has the VT alerts. Um, I know that when we were doing the emergency plan, one of the points that was brought up was that a lot of people don't understand that they actually have to sign themselves up for this. And I wonder if it's worth doing that as a public service announcement, sort of drawing their attention to the fact that this page is in their book and it's a really smart thing to do. To some, but you have to sign yourself up. That you're, it's not an automatic. Um, yeah, I usually do spend a few minutes going over announcements, who has displays, that sort of thing. Um, and before we get into the meeting, if someone, if one of you guys wants to mention that, I'll make a note to, to, to recognize you. Or I, I, I don't feel like I know any more about it other than that. Just it, it, had, it had come up in the meetings when we were doing the emergency plan. If you wish, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll direct them to the, to the page and uh, make sure they're aware of that. Mm -hmm. I have a question is the town agent, does it have to be a legal? I have to be a lawyer. No. To be a town agent, no. Is there a job description somewhere? You can find the statute. You can probably go on the Secretary of State's website, and there's usually a little blurb on there about all the elected positions. But no, there's no requirement that it's um, anything more than a resident. else in regards to the town meeting morning?
you, Rick. We will move on to the budget review portion of it. Do you want me to take the ball or do you want to take it? That's fine. No, whatever. I, I, you all shouldn't have any questions. So uh, I guess if anyone has questions, ask away and we'll talk it out. I guess what we could do, I, you know, for those that are here, uh, we could just go through, uh, maybe not on a, a micro level, but more on a macro level per department, uh, and just kind of uh, why it's up or why it's down, a couple of uh, overview hot button topics on it. Um, if anybody does have any questions or, or wants to go any farther into a, a certain department, just let me know. <clears throat> you want to start with the public works? Since it's a bigger part of that. I have a question of the uh, income. Absolutely. Um, under uh, property taxes, mm -hmm. there's a lot of figures here, and I'm confused as to what the actual amount of delinquent taxes there are as of the beginning of. Okay. So to find that, you would have to look at page, let me look at that, budget, or the, um, sorry, the link of tax is on page 46. It says 46, but not, that's not the right thing. Um, there's no list of delinquent There's a, that's on page 51, sorry, there's a statement of delinquent taxes, just like there was last year. So it tells you what the balance was as of um, January 10th, 2019. So I tell you what the beginning are, what we paid, what had been collected through January 10th. So the balance was 201,000 and I went on to tell you that we turned over 151,000 to um, Stitzel, Payton and Fletcher for a tax sale, which we're having on March 19th at one o'clock. There's, um, Originally 14 properties, but I believe we're down to nine, maybe, because we have had some that have redeemed already. So that balance actually doesn't have anything to do with the budget. What we're budgeting is just, um, we've been having this conversation, actually, Chris and all of us, about um, what we do is we budget, we budgeted 45,000 for delinquent taxes prior which, you know, you're always collecting delinquent taxes. So it, it does seem a little bit odd. Um, we don't put in a number for property taxes um, because we haven't set the tax rate yet and the grant list hadn't been finalized. So um, under those taxes is land use, which you know is current use. The money we get from the state is current use. Delinquent taxes prior is us making the assumption that we're going to, you know, collect at least $45,000 and delinquent taxes, and, and this number is going to eventually go away as our delinquent taxes all get collected. So that number over time will go down. You can see we have dropped at 5,000 this year. And then penalty and interest is just an approximate amount that we think we're gonna collect on top of the current taxes, or delinquent taxes is what we're gonna collect in interest and penalty that gets charged and collected in the same year. Um, and again, so, so, so some of these figures here, Louise, it's just what you're estimating you're going to co collect on this 201. Well, I'm uh, estimating I'm going to get it all, actually. <laughs> but, uh, but what we're trying to do is to get away from budgeting for collecting, you know, back taxes in the hopes that after this tax sale and, and probably another one next year, that we won't have people owing us since 2012. So the right. only taxes we'll be collecting are on you know, maybe only one year out instead of several years out. So um, eventually, you know, I think where I came from, we maybe budget 25,000 a year, but you know you're collecting, going to collect more than that. Because once people are, the May 15th payment comes around, um, once you're, you miss that, someone misses that payment, then we're quote unquote delinquent. Mm -hmm. You know, the auditor doesn't really think we're delinquent until June 30, but that's when we charge the penalty. The 8% penalty is after the May 15th payment is missed. So. And you have to borrow to make up this. Excuse me? You have to borrow. 
Money. Yeah, yeah, we had a hundred thousand dollar tax anticipation. No, right, because the school gets their money regardless of whether or not we've collected it. Yeah. So since Bethel has been carrying such an outstanding amount of delinquent taxes, you know, we've paid the school and sure borrowed and mm -hmm. yeah. That's why we've put in such an effort this year, um, you know, concentrated effort on collecting what was owed mm -hmm. in uh, taxes. So that's why it looks like that. Um, Any other questions in regards to the revenue portion of it? So, Public Works um, is next in the focus on page 33. So, that budget is up 9.92% um, over last year. So, we're still fine tuning overtime, and I think that will take us a couple of years to separate out our wages. But obviously, you can see some of the increases here are, are um, you know, some of it's just general stuff. There's a new um, state of Vermont permit that got added. That wasn't that much money. Um, for the up repairs and parts and tires from 41000 to $50,000. <clears> um, general building maintenance on garage went up this year for this budget. Um, See some of the bigger things. Uh, rental equipment, we have been in the past lucky enough to borrow a roadside mower from another town, um, but if that doesn't happen, we have that um, to contend with. Salt um, went up from a budget of 68,000 to 100,000. Um, so that was an increase. Obviously, we increased highway rehabilitation um, from 110 to 132. So those are the bigger things. The other thing to notice is that we did move the quote unquote Irene debt out of here into the into debt where it belongs because I don't know that wasn't actually Irene debt. Well, I have some specific questions in this. Sure. Okay. First of all, wages have increased twenty seven thousand one hundred twenty six dollars or fourteen point eight percent. Yep. Down near the bottom. It says hired services. Uh, supposedly it would done away with mm -hmm. seventeen thousand five ninety. But now in their stead, you put in overtime of thirty six thousand. Why so much overtime? They're actually reaching it this year. What I did when I came up with the number of thirty six thousand originally, I had just gone back and looked historically at what. Um, over several years to see what an average was. So that's how I'd come up with a number of 36,000 last year. And then we just decided to stick with that thing, you know, to see, we've had a couple of big winners to see how it, how it plays out. Mm -hmm. The other thing that um, we are trying to get better about is budgeting for leave time, which wasn't, um, because of the personnel policy in Bethel's, people get <coughs> leave <coughs> after a certain period, you know, a certain period of time. They get pay up for vacation, sick time, that sort of thing. So since we don't have a surplus, we're trying to get a little bit better about um, budgeting for that as an actual expense instead of taking hits like we have done in the past. Well, my question is really about the policy of having so much overtime. I've spoken against this year after year after year. I don't understand why we have to pay these guys so much overtime. And I don't understand why there's such a huge increase in wages. Over the years, wages have, have increased about 3% a year on a compounded annual basis for uh, these workers. Inflation has been about 2% since, since 2009. If you increase wages at a 2% compounded annual rate just to keep up with inflation. Their wages are going to increase, they're going to double in 36 years. If you give them a 3% uh, wage raise compounded annually when inflation is only 2%, their wages are going to double in 24 years. 
This is, this is the one thing that has always bugged me. I've, I've been in business all my life, and in the private sector, this would not happen. So why is, so why is there so much overhead? Well, I mean, there are some days when the sun is shining, they don't have to put <coughs> it in the sand. Why? There's a couple of reasons for that. And if we can tag in after, but we, a uh, couple of things. The annual raises are based on a 3% max. Um, there's like a 2% merit with a, you know, another 1% built in depending on um, evaluation. So there's a 3% max that each each employee can achieve through the um, through the annual um, performance evaluation and merit process. Uh, a couple of things that we we did um, change about a year or a year and a half ago was the way in which we pay overtime um, based upon some of the workers. Um, in some instances, they'll work. Um, if, if, let's say they got to be out for 16 hours straight to plow because of uh, you know two feet of snow. Um, now we pay them overtime after eight hours, so they. It's only fair if you're going to have someone work for 16 hours straight than working at all straight time. Uh, it's, just, it's just not fair to do that way. So we did change that around. At the same time, we can be a little more productive um, on how downtime. Did you, how did you change that around? We changed, changed it through policy. So, yeah, I want to, we have changed that personnel policy about a year to a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. The carryover of all the overtime, or all the sick time and vacation time, and this payout has stopped. So we set a date certain, which was the day that we approved this, mm -hmm. that anybody who's hired moving forward from that date will not be eligible for that huge payout at the end. Uh, they'll get their vacation time, like most other places do, but they will not get sick time. We also cap how much vacation and sick time you can carry over every year. We've stopped that. Uh, so we, we've, through policy, we've made those, some of those changes. Another reason why this is this wage number has gone up is because we rolled that additional that other position that we hired last year. Last year we had a position that was basically somebody who was doing kind of downtown. Uh, all those hired out services, the, the mowing and uh, some of the plowing, a lot of things that we were sending out to be done, we brought in house. So what is it, sixty percent or sixty five percent or something like that of his wages? Because they're split up between four different departments based off of what he does and how much time he does those. Uh, so you're seeing roughly 65% of his wage in that number as well. So that's why that's a little more inflated than it looks like before, uh, because there's really another position in there. Now that position was offset by, re by removing all the things that we subbed out. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another reason why that number looks a little bit inflated, is because you've got roughly 60, 65% of, of another position in that number. Um, their raises are based again off of a 3%. It's a 2% COLA, well, it depends on what the COLA is, but it's, it's a 3% total roundabout. Um, but do you get my point about how if you keep raising wages, even just 1% more than yeah. above inflation, do you see what happens? Well, then, if that's the case, case, we need to hire lots of people because they're going to quit. Well, you get into a tricky, it, it's tough because you get it. You can't just look at inflation. You have to look at everything else that's going on inside the market. You know, if, if we capped everything to inflation, then we would say healthcare is going to stay with inflation, right? Well, we all know healthcare is 11 percent a year. So, you know, by giving someone a three percent pay increase, they're still not even keeping up with school, healthcare, you know, and, and a lot of the other things, buying an automobile and everything else. You're still falling behind on that. Um, I'm, I'm in the private sector. I know we give. We give, uh, our goal is usually 3% a year. Is what? 3%. 3%. But, but the other thing too, there's, there's a lot behind that number as well. So it's not, you know, that number isn't just, isn't just the workers' hours that they're working on the road. Some of this is some of the liability that's, that is, uh, in the past, we haven't built into our budget some of the other liabilities that we have. For instance, let's say, and Greg just hit, hit on it, but some of our older policies that a majority of our workers still follow under is if someone retired and they had X amount of hours of, of uh, you know, sick time and vacation time banked, we would have to pay that out. Right. And we saw two years in a row where we had 
two significant, very large payouts that we had to do. So there may this number's a little inflated. If yeah. So we're building some, some of that in. Necessarily may not all get paid out. Right. If somebody does leave, then you know, then there's the payout doesn't happen, so it just stays in there and goes into the undesignated fund balance. But we have we have an employee that we're projecting might retire this year. So we've put in that money, and he falls under the old personnel policy. We've put that money in there just in case. So that if they were to leave, we're not trying to scramble to find where this money's gonna come from. So Lucian, we're working on it like kind of two ways. We're working on the liability that the town still has under the old policy um, that we have to follow, as well as we worked a year, a little more than a year ago about uh, amending that policy. So going forward, our new hires don't fall under that. Uh, because we got into a lot of situations, and these were a lot of the things that were getting us in trouble as a town in the past, why we had the debt we had, because so many of these things we had policies, but we, we never carried anything into a budget. So if all of a sudden, um, you know, someone retired, oh, well, we just had to pay him out $13,000, you know, and where did that money come from, right? Mm -hmm. It just, you know, it got rolled. So we're, we're, we're being more responsible and when we're finding these, we're addressing them in the budget, as well as we you've seen we've been doing a lot of policy reform here in the last year. Um, so we're we're trying to get ahead of it as well. I have another question. Now, we have these storms, of course, and they've got to go out and plow and sand and everything. Then we'll have three or four days of beautiful weather. They're not plowing. They're not sanding. What are they doing? They're fixing equipment. Fixing equipment. They're fixing equipment. They're putting back the laying back shoulders. They're I don't know, maybe trim the trees. If, like that tree, one storm we had, I can tell you that all of our guys spent three days just cutting trees. Three yeah. days what? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I have trouble hearing you and your, they took three days to what? To, they were trimming trees and branches and things off yes. the road. So a lot of times after a storm, and you can go up to the shop anytime, time, they're, they're doing a lot of maintenance. Um, we've got equipment that's, you know, it breaks down. I mean, it's, it's a, stuff on the equipment to do that kind of work. They're fixing chains, they're, they're fixing, Whatever. Uh, although we have some plows that have some issues, but typically that's that's what they're doing. Uh, or they're coming down on Main Street and they're clearing down Main Street, you know, removing the snow on Main Street or whatever. Uh, if you know they're not sitting around, anytime you're welcome to drive around with them and see what they do. Anybody, you're all welcome and see what they do and how hard they work. They're not sitting around. Or, or they're off. Has, has or anybody... they're off because they've worked 30 hours or 18 right. hours straight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, has anybody ever looked into? Paying them uh, a salary instead of by wages, in other words, a set salary. So there are some days they might have to go out and work 10, 12, 16 hours, but another day they could just take over and there's nothing to do. I'm just curious if there's ever been anything. Well, the, the challenge that we're having, Lucian, is with, um, you know, right now in the market, it's, a, it's an employee market. When, whenever unemployment gets so low like it is right now, and I, I, we're feeling it at my work as well as, you know, when you're at 3.8% unemployment, mm -hmm. there, there is, um, it's very competitive marketplace for employees. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you know, it's true. you have to come up with a, a, a good deal, right, to get the same employees in. Because you're, you're now, you're not, you're really not fighting, it used to be used to fight, you know, there was plenty of employees out there, so you could just hire whoever. And now you're really just kind of like taking from that person, you know, rather than finding a, a new employee, you're really taking it from that town or from that business. So it's, it's more challenging, more competitive right now, um, environment, at least right now. For There's the also a federal law about non-exempt versus exempt employees and overtime. I'd have to delve into it a little bit, but I can understand. Your workman's comp must go up too if they have to work over a certain, like if they work over eight hours, they have to work 10 or 12 hours or something. Does your workman comp go up? No, no it's based on our payroll. Oh, okay. yeah. And I just want to point out a few things in the that I had highlighted under the public works end of things. Um, you know, we are continuing, I mean, health, health insurance is always, at least the last three or four years that I've been on the board, it's always kind of our number one cost hitter on the budget. Um, we have we have done a, a fairly decent job on trying to curb that by, we switched a vendor last year for healthcare costs. Um, so we, you know, you continue to have a an increase in health insurance um, as well as retirement benefits. 
you know, and, and then that all comes with workers' comp and, you know, all the other layers that are in there. The um, one challenge that we continue to have is even though we have some fairly new uh, pieces of equipment in town, we, we're very challenged on some of the downtime that our pieces of equipment are, are going through right now. And in, in a lot of cases, in, a lot, in some cases, it's not, a, it's not a direct cost to the town. So the truck might go down. Now we're down a truck, right? And the truck goes to the dealership three, four days, comes back with no bill because it was covered under warranty. However, that truck's out of service for, you know, three or four days. So it, it incurs a cost that you may have to have someone come in to pick up, uh, you know, an independent person to come in to pick up for that. Um, so we've been very challenged on that um, currently. The, um, um, we, we have started working on and we're going to be working on, um, well, I guess it all depends on what the board looks like, when, you know, after town meeting day. But the goal is to, um, to work more on the capital uh, fund that we have right now. Because um, as you can see that the building maintenance is continuing to go increase by the year. Um, to the point where we're, we're almost getting to the point to where we can start putting payments down on a building rather than um, shelling out $12,000 a year for repair of a building that, you know, is, is really not usable anymore. Um, awesome. So we're really, really going to be looking at that very hard um, and, and prioritizing. We, we did touch base on two sessions right before the budget. Um, but you can see that that um, continue that number. If you looked at it over the last couple of years, continuing to ratchet up, and um, and then there's just a, a you know in some cases there's just some things that have when you neglect to to budget certain items over a long period of time, at some point you're forced your hand to buy a new comm system or whatever it might be that you should have bought ten years ago. So those are faced. We did have the salt issue with, um, you know, salt costs just across the board. Was it 15% increase on the cost of salt? So using the same amount of salt, um, salt has increased. In some cases, it's even increased more than that due to the salt shortage that we have in the state of Vermont right now. Um, so that that has been an incurred cost, and and I just wanted to hit base, uh, touch base on the the highway rehabilitation money, we increased that um, by 22000 this year. To stick with our, our capital roads improvement plan that we have, um, which is on the website, correct? The paving plan? Um, I believe so. There's, there's a lot the report, of peaks. The report is. There's a lot of peaks and valleys to that, that plan. So, um, we have been in the $110,000 um, area for a couple of years now. And if you look at that plan, and I don't have it available, but that, that plan over the next five or six years is supposed to increase, you know, as high as $180,000 to, to do certain projects in and around the town. Um, what we decided to do as a, a board this year is is to start, instead of going for peaks and valleys, trying to get more of a bell curve on that. Um, instead of asking the town for 160000 next year, we're going to ask for $123,000 uh, this coming year. So, so that we can try and curve that a little bit so we don't have those peaks and valleys as sharp. Um, so that, those are probably the biggest ones. I saw your hand back there. I didn't I have a question about right there. What's the employee? Uh, town percentage of your health care. Is it be 21 percent? Right now the town pays 100 percent of the premium and the, um, they split the, there's that HRA, so they basically they split your um, deductible, so the town pays the first half, you pay the second half, and then they pay 100 percent of the premium for health and dental. And we obviously budget a higher percentage since we don't have a crystal ball, I'm not sure what we're going to get. So I think we budgeted 10%. Um, and then this last year, we were lucky it came in that I think it was in 7.8, something like that. And um, so obviously, we are budgeting for an increase because we know the actual amount for the first six months, but we don't the second. So. 
I, I know that uh, a previous board member was always complaining uh, about how there were there was so much uh, infrastructure that needed to be fixed and upgraded and so forth over the last number of years. But the hurricane took care of that uh, because FEMA ended up uh, paying a tremendous amount of money to upgrade, and not only to fix, but to upgrade a lot of the infrastructure like culverts and roads and so forth. So I'm wondering after that why you feel there is still such a need for such a, car, a large capital budget for road improvement. So if we're talking just the, uh, the highway rehabilitation piece, yeah. that, that is strictly pavement only. That's not, that's not culverts, that's not gravel for dirt roads, that's not anything else other than, it, it's, we had a study about three years ago, 16, 16? Yeah. So two years ago, two and a half years ago, we had a study that was done put the, the life cycle of our paved roads with the mileage, and our mileage is what, 30, 40 miles, 30 miles, 40 miles? So paved? Yeah. Um, class one, two, and three are 15.8. 15. Are you talking about that 132,000? Yeah. yeah. That's all paved? It's all paved roads. Yeah, there's about $2 million of paved in it. Huh? So that was to take the life cycle of the roads with the current condition of our roads and develop a plan. So they have come, put a plan in place that we've been following over the last three years of uh, the cycle. Like for instance, Sand Hill is, is a, a perfect example of a road that's on to, to be redone um, that's coming up. And Sand Hill is the one that's gonna make the peak go up because that, you know, the, that entire road is beyond just paving. It needs new drainage and taking down the dirt and done correctly. Um, so there's, there's some of those roads that we have um, that are beyond just putting a paving mandate on. Quite a few number of years ago, when I was having to travel back and forth, the state repaved Route 12 from Bethlehem to the other side. They didn't do anything about the drainage and culverts and so forth. And now it's pretty much the way it was before the last time. When they repaved from Bethel to Randolph, they spent a lot of time and money redoing all the drainage all the road and everything, which in the long run is going to help to preserve the, the paving part. When you do these new paving projects, I'm suggesting that you ought to pay a lot of attention to maybe fixing some of the drainage along the road because it's going to help the road to last longer. My little road, uh, Christian Hill Road, it was paved number of years ago, but nothing was done to any of the drainage. It's breaking up again. When that was done back in uh, 1990. That's more than a few years. What? Christian Hill? Mm -hmm. Oh no, it was done recently than that. Yeah, they did that one. Um... That was, that was, they put a skin coat on it. No, they, no, they, 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 they ground the whole thing like up and paved it. And this was like 2005 or six. Five or six years ago. Yeah. I, I mean, usually, I would say, and you know, I well, this so happen to be a paving expert, but the um, most of the towns in the state of Vermont, when you when you pave towns, they don't do anything on the roads. They don't ditch them. They don't. They don't do anything on the state contracts. They'll put time in there for ditching and things like that. But the majority of the towns, they don't get into doing any of the drainage improvements unless it's kind of a, a, a rebuild job where you get down to the dirt and they look at it. But definitely, you know, uh, just like anything, if you can do some of the unforeseen maintenance, <coughs> it uh, prolongs your product longer. But, so. so I complain about this budget, but I know if there are other budget items where you can handle a little bit lower, which is a good <laughs> Well, the, the public works one's always the easy one to, to hit because that's the, the the largest component of the budget and usually it's under the biggest microscope so we have the um, next piece we had was the fire department um, you'll see that there there are some uh, increases in the fire department this year we had um, 
again, some, some of these things are uh, well, I won't say some. Uh, majority of the increases for the fire department this year are, are items that um, should have been included you know, five, ten years ago that you know, that every year we're saying, well, we'll get one more year out of it. Uh, it's just kind of all coming to a head. You know, if we want to have a professional service as we should, for, you know, for fire, then, then we need to have um, certain items to be able to do that. As well as there's a lot of regulation that keeps coming down from federal and state authorities on this is what you need to do to comply. Of course, they don't usually give you any funding to do that, but they're very good at saying, you need to do this, and now we need to figure out a way to do that. So in some ways, what we've been doing over a period of time is, you know, not really cheating the system, but trying, you know, doing what we can, uh, but maybe is isn't meeting regulations. And now the state and federal government is really cracking down on the regulations on things. So, uh, like for instance, one was the uh, breathing apparatuses that, that we have. Traditionally, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, traditionally, uh, the breathing apparatuses that we get are second hand. We get them from another fire department when they're done and they're reconditioned and they're like new to us. Um, but that's how we've been able to curb costs in the years. Well, now the regulation is to the point where you know, each individual uh, firefighter needs to have their own breathing apparatus that is. Um, that is specially set up for just that the mask. one person. The mask. Mask. Each, each firefighter has to have their own mask now. So that's one of those things that it's kind of, you know, it's not something that you really can say, well, we'll get to that next year because if something happens, you know, that, that's a safety issue. So they're, they're, uh, that's the $7,000 uh, increase, which, um, how That's much was the total? How, yeah. So, how much was the total amount for the apparatuses? Thirty something thousand, one hundred thirty-nine thousand. So we were forced Lucian with one hundred and thirty, one hundred forty thousand dollars worth of equipment that needs to be purchased, or else we can't fight fires anymore. Luckily, there's a grant out there that is going to take care of everything except for seven thousand. So it's a five percent match. So really, uh, a really good deal, but it's. 7,000 that got increased um, in the budget. <coughs> There's a few other things being that, like the telephones pretty much doubled. Um, that is because uh, that's to do with the internet, right? I believe. Yeah. Basically, the way yeah. it works is we had a $600 computer that we got 15 years ago. In every fire report, we have to go on to MIMPERS, which is the National Fire Incident Reporting. And you have to do that by law. That's how you get your grants. Well, I did it out of my house for years and years and finally passed the responsibility on to somebody else. And we have to go home and do it all the time because we have no Wi-Fi. Um, and it would be nice to do it when you get back to the station after the call because it's a pretty intricate thing you have to do instead of, you know, we do fill out sheets, but instead of trying to do it, you know, let them build up and do 10 at a time. Also the it's also operations. our emergency operations backup center. So if something happens at the town office, they move to the fire station and there's no Wi-Fi, which shuts everybody down. So there's some of those things, again, you know, certain regulations that we have to comply with, as we see with the constable's mm -hmm. department as well, that um, you know, it's, they make all these regulations that don't really help you out on the financial need of it. And we did try to put in some good notes, especially in the fire department, because the stuff is, you know, it's specialty to a fire department, so it helps it to hopefully understand the... Yeah, like, well, well, I saw what you said, it costs each, each person a day. Yeah. Which is really cheap. It is, for 24-7 fire service, it is cheap, so you're right. <laughs> I'm glad you read that part. <laughs> but along, along with the apparatuses, all the fire department members have to get fit tested, um, which is uh, which is a cost. Um, you know, there's there's some other equipment that has that we haven't uh, really budgeted here in the past um, that that just you know hoses and things like that. So um, 
kind of coming coming around to get it all done here. Well, my next question is about the constable. <laughs> Do we have it? His budget going up thirty two percent. Well, it's not hard when it's not much of a budget. What's that? I said it's not hard for it to jump up quite a bit when it's a low budget. <laughs> the, uh, do we have any more questions in regards to the fire department, the board, or anybody in the audience? Gonna let them off that easy? <laughs> now we can call over public. Anybody want to yeah. practice? Yeah. <laughs> so All the council right. budget is a little bit different this year. Um, a couple of things come to light this year. One is that the constable qualifies for retirement. The town of Bethel participates in the state retirement. So um, so he qualifies for that. So that was something that we had budgeted for in the past and just realized so that's a new addition. Um, <clears throat> some software and computer upgrades um, that hadn't been budgeted for in the past is in here. Um, the other thing is you had an animal control contract with your local vet for years, but you never budgeted. Greg and I would get, you know, the bills would come in and we're like, well, where are we going to code this? Because of your, you know, your dog ordinance, if a dog went there, someone has to pay that bill. So we decided we'd put it in a budget, actually budget for an expense and put a number in it this year and see where we But where do those dogs come from? Are they just strays? It could be, yep, a stray. And um, so then, you know, it's housed there for a little bit before it can go to the Humane Society in Woodstock. Um, and this year, of course, we budgeted uh, $5,000 for the cruiser replacement fund. Obviously, that's the big number. And that, um, that cruiser replacement fund, there's a, ca there's a plan for that. So there's even a capital plan in here for that. And um, that we worked out to figure out, uh, the select board decided they were going to go with a used vehicle and not, um, not a new cruiser. So that's how we based the, um, the amount and, and um, it's, Let's see if I can find it, but it's in here, um, and it tells you what the plan is, what the replacement plan is for the, for the cruiser. So that's why it was such a big jump, because in the past, you know, they haven't budgeted for a cruiser replacement. I don't know what they have to do, but, mm. or maybe they weren't going to replace it. I'm really not sure. Well, you know, if you'll remember right, Lucian, um, how long have we had the new cruiser for? Is this our third year? It's either our second or third year with the new one. And remember that one year we had quite the little spike when we had to go buy a new cruiser? Uh, oh, we had a mark. This should be the second year. Second. That's on page 20, Lucian. There's, a, there's the uh, capital cruiser four year replacement plan. Yeah. Um, and then there's the So the, the past, the last cruiser that we bought came from Bradford? The one we got now? Yeah. Uh, Wynn Hall. Wynn Hall. Okay. So it came from Wynn Hall. We purchased that second second hand and then once you have to again uh, conform to the regulations and have the equipment and everything else put in it you know uh, we ended up spending close to twenty thousand dollars for that one and we, we, we spent uh it was seventy five hundred for the vehicle and another three thousand to repair it and whatnot and then i think some minor miscellaneous things but so yeah, yeah. you were lucky right we got lucky you had came out for it. Yeah. So we, we had figured the cruiser, uh, doing a cruiser every four, yep. four years. Um, and we budgeted some money for fit up just in case you weren't as lucky to get something. If your light bar wasn't going to fix, what can you strip off one to get to the other? So sometimes. Of course, again, this isn't like us buying a new cruiser. It's a, you know, the last cruiser came with how many miles was on it already? Uh, 70, I think. 70, 80, something like that. And so. Well, how many miles a year do you put on? Um, don't know offhand, I bet we put, uh, yeah. So it's about 90000 on it right now. Right, so, yeah, so. 10 dollars yeah, probably. The, the good thing about the replacement fund, too, is, you know, before how we did things, we put money into the budget, and if we didn't use, use it by the end of that physical year, then you couldn't carry the money over. Uh, with a putting into a reserve fund, for instance, we can monitor that reserve fund. So if we put $5,000 in it to start it this year, and say we put another five in the next year, you know, our anticipation is to replace the cruiser in four years, but we don't know. Maybe maybe we'll be able to get another year out of it, you know? 
and that might be the case where we, maybe that year we don't have to put any money in the reserve fund, you know, so, but at least it gets a flow of money going there so that when we have to do it, we don't have a spike. Again, it's kind of the rationale behind it. Well, I had a question about that, getting back to the, to the salt. Say next year you don't have to use nearly as much as we have had to use this year. Do you, do you put whatever is left in that line item in, into like savings or something as credit towards the following year? No. So kind of the way the salt, we'll say salt, sand, gravel, because it kind of all goes together, yeah. is, I mean, it's no different with the state of Vermont. You know, their budget starts off with, with winter maintenance, right? And then depending on how severe that winter is, will tell you how much money you have left in your budget for the springtime to do other stuff. So if we have a year where where we use a little more on the sand and salt end of things, we'll probably do a little less graveling on the roads. And if you have a year where you do a little less sand and, and salt, then it gives you an opportunity to do a little bit more graveling on the roads. Now we have line items to say this is what we're budgeting. Uh, usually something like sand, we get our sand up front. So we have that all up front loaded for the winter time. Okay. And then the salt, usually we, we don't get all our salt at the same time because we don't have a salt shed. So we have to pick up salt periodically throughout the year. Um, and, and hopefully, I mean, I would say, you know, this winter has been pretty, pretty expensive compared to, you know, this is, I, I overheard the state of the law PR guy talking about the, I don't know what they were. They had, they threw a number out there. I wanted to say six million. Six million dollars over on winter maintenance. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's been a very tough winter. So I would like to think that, you know, next year we'll would, would buy less salt than we bought this year. <laughs> you know. But. Well, I mean, in a lot of businesses, when you budget for something so large, such as a hundred thousand dollars for the salt, they're going to. If they don't spend it, they're going to carry it forward as a credit, which would help to, to keep the budget from going up and up and up and up. Well, what will happen to it is it, it would go into the undesignated fund balance. So if once Bethel has the luxury of actually having an undesignated fund balance, what you can do is, and what I've seen done before, is at the, say, the next town meeting, we could vote to put it right on the warning to say, Will the voters of Bethel take ten thousand dollars out of the undesignated fund balance and move it to X? You know, you will have that luxury, but right now you don't have one. So once you have a surplus, you certainly, you know, it's really up to the voters. You can decide how you're going to spend that. You know, you usually keep a little bit of a cushion just in case because you're budgeting out eighteen months. But but you're right. In the perfect world, you'll you'll have something in your undesignated fund balance, and then you'll be able to vote it out. But you know, it depends. You know, I've seen places where maybe they underspend on salt, but they over what if something unforeseen happened because you're budgeting out, so you have that cushion there. One year we built a, you know a salt shed out of because we had a, a great like a really easy winter, so we didn't have a lot of overtime, didn't have a lot of stuff, so we actually built a building out of the, that and instead of rolling it into the undesignated fund balance. So it depends, but but you're right, which and that's exactly what will happen to it is it'll. It doesn't get lost by any means. No. And the, and the winter is really, the, the winter dictates our, our, you know, a very large majority of our, our public works budget, unfortunately. So if you have a tough one like we had this year, you know, you, you're spending at budget or above budget. And then if you get one, like, I think it was about three years ago, we had a late winter. You know, then, then that's money that comes back. But, but also we'd like to get to the point where we have an undesignated fund balance so that then, you don't have to do short term, you know, borrowing either. So at times when we have to go and borrow for hundred thousand dollars, you know, to pay the school to while well, we're waiting to collect taxes, if you have a des undesignated fund balance, then you don't have to do that as well. But you know, our our checkbook doesn't usually say, you know, we have you know, this money set aside. It's usually saying you know, this is where we're at. Or in the past it said you owe. <laughs> so we're trying to get to the positive things. A few months ago, from my own knowledge, I went back, I think, I, was, I, think I had 
budgets back to like 2010. And I followed the average increase in budget and taxes from 2010 forward to like 2016 or something. You know. Those budgets were increasing at an average rate of 7% a year. And the taxes were increasing at an average rate of 7% a year. And I figured that, that if we kept up at that rate, spending and taxes was going to double by 2024. So Very just close. might think about that. You know, in in, uh, in 14 years, spending and, and taxes will double. And I don't think that most people's personal budgets that they have to spend on their property taxes are probably increasing at the same rate. Yeah, I know. So it's I know just something I, to think about in the future. I hear you because when I purchased my home in 2007, here, since 2007, well, when I purchased my home, it was four thousand dollars in taxes a year. And now it's sixty-two hundred. So, I mean, just in eleven years, it's gone up by. So this year we're over fifty percent. So, like you were saying, it was tracking, right? <coughs> but it's it's getting harder and harder. We get off topic, but it's getting harder and harder in Vermont because there's all kinds of things, you know, being Mark done Texas in Montpelier that is going to get very expensive for us. Mm -hmm. My taxes nineteen seventy five was four hundred dollars. Now they were almost five. <laughs> well, that was that was yeah. Town and school. Yeah, everything's getting expensive. The percent. It's very challenging. But the last couple of years, we've been, you know, we've, we've tried to reduce. We commit three percent this year. So, yeah. you know, we're all aware that we don't we don't want to raise taxes. That's, that's the last. You know, we're trying to to make this as realistic as possible and, and keep that that percentage as low as we can. And, and probably one, you know, one of the best things over this course of the year is that we, as a town, we, we finally have a handle on what certain items cost us for a year. You know, in the past it was, you know, you know, maybe things weren't coded correctly to a certain department. You know, now when you buy whatever, if you buy, you know, tires for the truck, then you then it goes under that that phase and you and you have that and you know what it is so that you can budget it. Or if we have payout for retirement, we know how much that is so we can budget for that. And, you know, so we have a a pretty good understanding of what the what entails the budget now. Now it's just making an accurate budget so that we can live by. Um, and that's kind of, I mean, this is kind of the first budget really that's pretty accurate on coding costs and knowing what certain items really cost us. And keeping track. <clears throat> right. Well, with a new town manager, financial person, what changed is like now, like for the fire department, I'm the head of the department. I have to go in every week, every two weeks, depending on the building, look at every bill, approve every bill, and put it in the category of goes. That was never done in the past. Right up until just a couple of years ago, I knew what my budget was when I got to town before. So things have really come a long, long ways just in the last, how long have you been here? <laughs> yeah. And, and we're seeing, you know, subtle, improvements you know you know before it used to be you know the fire department used to buy the fuel you know now the fire department has fuel at the public works building you know so we're saving money on that but in the past you know one department talked to the other department you know so we had you know filling up fire trucks for you know more money than it should have cost you when you could have went to public works and done it Select board member will bring up gets out of boy for that. So, so yeah, there's you know those synergies, and you know when department heads actually have to look at what they're buying and how much it costs them and code it to something, they're being responsible for their budget. Um, yeah, we've also got a purchasing policy that we approved a few months ago too, so that regulates how purchases are made, and it dictates um, who's allowed to do what and what comes in front of the town the administration and, and so so. I think that's going to help a little bit too. Um, we've got uh, purchase orders that we've implemented. So if there's large purchases, those actually come across my desk before they're purchased. Uh, we designate who can, who can go to, to what stores or who can go to stores and buy things. So, um, you know, we're trying to, to 
make things as as open as possible, uh, as transparent as possible, and, and you know, its accountability is really what we're looking at here. And I think it's open. I think you know, I think I think we've really seen realistic numbers, and that's what we were going for. Because when Teresa and I first started, we didn't know. We just didn't know how much, what was actually included in these line items. We just had no idea, and you can't forecast based off of those bad numbers. So I think now. We are we are really getting realistic numbers and we're moving forward. Well, I think uh, the board one one thing I really appreciate the board doing over the past two years is hiring the management that you have hired. Especially to those who are more better than Greg and I don't know exactly what we pay you. I'm sure it's worth every dime. So. We're getting it back. <laughs> Definitely the restructuring of the office has, has been very uh, beneficial to the town, uh, as well as probably more efficient running. Um, you know, having one person really just concentrating on the financials of the town, uh, where in the past that ended up just being one of many tasks for one person to do, you know, it, it allows Greg to go and, and work more with public works and other areas. And, you know, to really spend the time on the financial and everything, which, which is what the town really needed was yeah. was someone to just look at the books all the time. Yeah. So that's been a big, big help mm -hmm. for us. Did anybody have anything else in regards to the constable department? The recreation department really is level funded, other than um, the last last year they had twenty thousand dollars that was appropriated for the uh, the recreation improvement fund and this year uh, based upon the the um, the fund strategy they, they only needed ten thousand dollars to be put into that fund this year so there's you know you take the ten thousand dollars out that's basically the difference in the rec department this year okay what's it another uh, one of my pet peeves I just uh, happened to go to the the minutes of the recreation department their last meeting. The minutes basically said that still after four or five years they haven't come up with a, with a, a plan or a budget for the skateboard park and yet they keep asking for more money year after year after year and it just sits there. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. So I, I was just going to say that can't we just or well, maybe at the meeting I can do this. Can't we just stop this fund until they have a plan and decide how much money, I mean, what they're going to do with the money that they already have? And I'd like to know how much money they do have set aside that. Yeah. I mean, it's a little bit of a convoluted question, but I can try to answer it the best I can. The, um, now we just have to understand that the, the recreation department improvement fund is for the master plan of the recreation department so that is you know it started out with pool house improvements and things like that and then there's anything from the skateboard park the tennis courts there's a, a basketball court ice skating uh, trails things like that so there's there's more than just a skateboard park what what has been confusing is over the last two years is how they had prioritized the um, the, the master plan was the skateboard park was next in line and there's been um, there's been many developing issues in regards to the skateboard park either through uh, in some cases um, you know a grant not coming through or um, or having to go and redesign it based on budget so it's it's been treading water and really hasn't been moving in a positive or forward direction. So the board, we did meet with them, what was that, back in October? We met with them last October? So we, we did meet with them last, um, well, we met with them in September, but kind of, we had the same question as the board was, where are we at, you know, what is preventing us from moving forward? Um, you know, if, can we take a different avenue jump on the next piece and you know put that behind but um, and, and we're due probably right after town meeting day to circle back with the recreation department because there's been there's been some 
uh, information that has come forward here in the last couple of weeks with another one of the grants that we had applied for that we're not going to get. So now it's, you know, don't want to speak for us or them, but now is probably the time where we need to reprioritize it over there. But we haven't had that opportunity to do that as a board yet. So, so I was at the last meeting, I think it was last week. It was last Tuesday or Thursday, Wednesday, whatever it was. Um, basically, what had happened was the, so the board had, in, let me start over, in that budget line that you see on there, there is a balance in there. The whole of that balance is not dedicated just to the skate park. Mm -hmm. It's for a lot of things. The board has actually, uh, I think we actually did a motion to approve uh, an allocation of, I believe it's fifty thousand dollars, out of that fund for the skate park. How much? Again? Fifty. Fifty. Out of that fund, for the, that doesn't empty the fund, but fifty thousand out of that fund has been allocated for that skate park. Okay. Now they have a design which is much higher than that. So we went out for a grant. We did not receive that grant. It was roughly. Well, roughly 50% of the funding for this skate park. Um, because we didn't get it, at the last meeting, there was one more grant that they want to try for. So that's what they're working on now. They're working on one more grant application, and I'm actually going to send the project out to bid so that I know what the line item costs are for each, kind of each element, so that if, um, if something happens with this grant, they can go back and look and see what will that $50,000 pay for. Mm -hmm probably going to find out they won't pay for much, and they're going to bag it, I think. Um, what the discussion I remember, basically what I heard it say was that this is kind of our last chance for the skate park right now. If this grant doesn't come through, we probably can't get a real good design, then maybe we need to move on to something else, and then come circle back around later on to the skate park. Um, so I think they're coming to that same conclusion as you are. It's been so many years of nothing happening, whether it's because of the budget or whatever, but they're at the end of the, I think they're at the end of the rope, if you will, and if this, this next grant does not come in like they, they want it to, then they're going to look at something else. Well, I'm glad to hear you put a limit on it. Right. Yeah, we did that in October. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, because there was always a question as to how much was in there. Yeah. Yeah. How much were numbers that were going we, back and forth? We put a combination notion of a, uh, a number that can come out of the fund to use towards it, as well as a cap on the square footage. Right. So right. we didn't, the other thing we didn't want to have happen was some private donor give them a half million dollars and build a 10,000 square foot skate park, mm -hmm. you know. So what would we, it had to be under 5,000. 5, yeah. 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 So it has to be under 5,000 square feet in it. Yeah, I believe it was 50,000. 50 is what the town would so. Yeah. That was the town map. And I'm also working on, I'm working with them on a uh, capital plan. So we've got all those elements of that master plan, the skate park and the, you know, the tennis courts and all that. Well, each element, I'm, I've got a, a, a master or a, a capital plan that I'm trying to put together with them so that we can see each year how much we're, we're, we're going to be asking for and how that's going to work out down the road. Um, because this year, they, they basically said 10000 because we, we don't know. Yeah. You know, and it was 20 last year, so. But if we can get a roadmap and get a capital plan and a capital budget put together, we'll know exactly how we need to, to allocate and ask for those funds. And they just recently updated the master plan they, they because they had to update the permits. Yeah, they moved um, it around. I, I would assume that they're going to put something together for a town meeting day, uh, booth, or... I don't, well, so the record sure. department will be doing something, but I don't know if they're going to be doing it. I would, I would expect them to have some sort of way out plan. <clears throat> Because that'll, that'll probably be a hot topic, is, you know, on the red master plan. Yeah. But, but I, I think they're getting to the point where you are. That, that they've been kind of banging their head against the wall long enough, and if this doesn't work out, it's time to go on to the next one and, and circle back around later on. So the money you see allocating to this fund, the, the, they already have the money for the skateboard part. So this is for other things, part of that master plan. Because okay. um, we don't want to... Again, don't want to get into the situation where we put zero in it and then next year ask for 20,000, you know, double or whatever. So we continue to try to get that bell curve. Um, you know, I've watched this fund over the years. It started out as a, as a line item that we had to vote on for $5,000 and it went to 10,000 and then it got put into the permanent budget and got in there and then went up to 20,000. I mean, to me, I'm sorry, but it gets ridiculous. And it went higher than that one year. Went to, or whatever that year that they But again, those funds are not just for one thing, they're for the, the entire master plan. Okay. Any other questions in regards to the recreation part? Yeah.
parks and public places, you know, the biggest mover there was we had um, we had some added street lighting costs last year. I remember it was about five thousand dollars worth of yeah. yeah, the LED, the LED lights LED. that we um, put in. Um, that's probably the biggest mover in this budget downward. Um, you know, there are other some small, subtle um, items, but overall the budget's down about 9000 on that. The uh, <coughs> municipal office. Now, if you went through Lucian over your last 10 years, this is probably the first year that the municipal office has gone down. <laughs> so, um, you know, again, you know, credits to, you know, Greg and Therese and everybody else in the office here, but, you know, combination of, of really, you know, <coughs> them taking over and, and putting uh, the administration in, that they have in place. Uh, right now it's very efficient, um, as we've been seeing, lots of good positive comments about feedback of coming in and doing business in the mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, not to mention, you know, right now having a good foot on collecting back um, payments and taxes and things like that, and seeing a pretty good use of that. Um, the biggest movers on that was um, we went down on a position. Um, right, so we lost a position that we didn't back for. So. Well, I wonder why you had to hire a permit bookkeeper to begin with. <laughs> well, we had a really odd, we had kind of a, for a few years there, you know, in between Dell leaving and Keith coming in for a while, we had a lot of moving parts there. You know, we, we, you know, we had the uh, town manager, assistant manager, bookkeeper, you know, and then it always seemed like the bookkeeper would leave and then we didn't have somebody, you know, so there was a weird um, formula there for a while and I think we got the right, right now the right formula in place, uh, which seems to be working out for everybody. Um, so the, the wages are down, uh, which also brings down the health insurance. I mean, even though there was an increase in the health insurance, we have one less person on health insurance, so overall it um, comes down. Well, the other thing too is not, is this year, Lucian, last year we budgeted, um, that was my recommendation, and, and I was wrong. I'm, I can admit it. I had uh, only budgeted about 70% of the HRA liability because I wasn't sure what historically, you know, was spent. And this year we budgeted for 100% of the HRA liability. So, because I wasn't sure what the use was going to be. So this year, so that's another reason that the insurance isn't quite, you know, apples to apples. It's because we did go from 70% to 100% of the liability this time. So I got smart. <laughs> so that's that. That's just because I figured anyone's going to crunch those numbers and be you. So I just wanted to let you know that was the other piece there. So I think that's uh, the biggest parts of the municipal office end. Did anybody have any questions in regards to that? Again, that's a, a department, well, when we, when we get back from town meeting day, you know, working forward with the capital improvement plan, which, you know, the capital improvement plan really is going to address some of the issues that we have with, mostly with the public works building, but, you know, we also need to talk about how the town office comes into that picture. Um, so if we end up, you know, we have been discussing as a board of, almost at this point, for the for the amount of money that we're putting in maintenance a year at the public works building that we could almost be making payments on putting a new facility in there. Um, to almost make payments on what? We could almost make payments on a bond payment for building a new facility. Oh, I see. At the public works. Because, you know, li really we have $12,000 a year that's just going nowhere. Just plugging holes. Yeah. Um, but when we do that, we have discussions that we're going to need to talk about with some things at the municipal office that we'll need some uh, care because obviously if we do a public works building 
we're not going to be able to do a municipal office for a period of time, you know. Um, so we'll, in some ways, we're, there is some money in the municipal office right now that is really just kind of plugging some holes too, you know, heating and system heat and, you know, crazy. you know that building needs some needs some money, but we're going to wait to address those concerns permanently once we figure out what we're going to do with the public works building. Again, we're working on a capital plan for that too, for all of our facilities. Uh, you know, interest rates are still really low and are probably going to stay low, but it would probably be a good idea to kind of issue bonds and so forth to move along as fast as possible so we can take care of advantage of these low interest rates. I think Vermont just had their bond rating downgraded once, and I read that it might cost the state an uh, extra $10 million for the new bonds that they have to issue, so sooner is better than later. Yeah. Well, that will be um, that'll be one of our biggest items that, uh, well, hopefully, as a board, that we'll be looking to tackle um, this coming year. We'll be really getting to the capital and improvement end of things. Um, anybody have anything else with this block? Uh, town hall costs are, are slightly down. Mainly, that's um, well, it's mostly level funded. It's just the uh, we had had some extra money in there for building repair, which went to painting um, the tower, which finally got done this year. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, town officials went down slightly. The um, the listers ended up going up a little bit. Of course, when you're working with a, a small budget, it uh, doesn't take much for it to go up 19%. Um, combination of that was there's um, there's some services that need to be upgraded with mapping and, and computers to do that with. Um, so they also had this past year, if I remember right, a portion of the year, not all the listers were working all the time. So um, that wasn't. 100% being um, funded at all times. So those would be the differences there. <coughs> and government operations. This one, um, this one had a little bit of movement on it. Um, Government operations is kind of a tough budget in some ways because it's not a it's not a budget a lot of times that we 100% um, have a handle on when it comes to what I mean is there's a lot of things in here like what's you know like tax abatements for instance you, you don't know what what the town is going to do for tax abatements for the year um, as of uh, well. So far, we have, like this past one, we have $5,800 in tax abatements, you know. And I, I believe the last budget, we ended with like $8,000 in tax abatements. So trying to put a number to that, in the past we did put a number to it, it was this, you know, $100 or something like that. Um, so again, just trying to do an average of what abatements in the town have been, um, which the two-year history of abatements, the average was $3,600. So. Again, it was all these little items that add up every year that was kicking the town of Bethel's budget every year. You know, when you don't plan for these, you know, all these little three thousand dollar items all keep adding up. So that one's been um, updated for this year. <coughs> um, legal is always again. It's one of those that you just don't know. You could have. You know, I haven't seen it in a couple of years, but you could have a year where you don't need any legal. Um, mm -hmm. Or you can get into, like we had, you know, we had three out of the last four years where we had three different legal issues in the town that cost the town quite a bit of money to fight those. The town was victorious in all three of them, but it cost a lot of money. Um, last year we had briefly increased, we went from $15,000 to $25,000 in the budget to increase that 
based on what the three-year average had been. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a little bit uh, more successful year with the legal um, end of things, and um, so we had chopped a little bit out of that budget. The auditing services, which in, in the past had been an absolute mess in the town, uh, based on trying to catch up with previous audits. You know, instead of doing one audit, you're doing three audits. Um, we had it. I believe the year two years ago it spiked at fifty-three thousand dollars with audits, and you know it hit that hit that year, but it wasn't for all that one year worth of audit. Um, another positive of having the makeup in the town now, as well as Teresa on board, is that we are caught up with our audits, and we are caught up in a way that the auditing service now um, has confidence in us to give us a lower rate. So, um, Therese was able to make a deal with them, um, and I, I believe, is it a two or three year deal? Three year, three year deal for 20000 a year. So, where in the past, even a single year audit was, for us was twenty five, thirty thousand. 30000 but a lot of that was you know, things weren't ready for them when they came in. They had to go chase a bunch of, of work, and now, now it's all done, ready for them. So that will save us some money. Um, we had, um, we get a, a couple of things in here. We get, um, it, it's good that we are doing the tax sales, but with the tax sales comes um, some extra costs. Um, so there's, being, being the amount of tax sales that we have right now, there's an added cost to do that, so that's in there. And then we had a, a commitment to the Energy Committee, um, which the $7,000 that's in there right now is a, a matching grant um, <coughs> for that. Correct, Greg? Yes. So if, if, if the Energy Committee gets the grant, then it's our 10% match. Then that's the 10% match. If they don't get the grant, then, then it, you know. Well, what is that for? Better connection grant? What is that? Greg, you want to? Yeah, I think the energy committee, they're going to speak on this uh, later on. It's, I don't remember what all the specifics that they're about, but it's, uh, they're working, I think they're working with the uh, downtown people on this, right? Yeah, my, my recollection is they are. I can't. Yeah, I think it's for like a, 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 a multimodal uh, thing. Let me get the specifics and I'll get back with you on. I can't remember exactly what. I'll have to look at their presentation when they came in. Um, and I'll talk to Jose. But I know he's going to be there as well to speak on that. They're not trying to get any grants that we have to match for something. Well, this is a 10 percent match. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, you got, you know, you know, this one's kind of two two prongs with combination of a combination of towns are supposed to be having certain committees in their towns, and one one of which is that's being uh, pushed pretty hard in the state of Vermont is the Energy Committee. So when we had started the Energy Committee, which was I think three four years ago now. Might be this might be the fourth year on the energy committees that sound about right. There were there were certain uh, projects to come with that committee, and one of which was was this one. Um, so these are kind of um, prior commitments that we had with the energy committee that um, for these grants, um, and, and they're doing some other ones. We probably heard um, about talking about a level two charging station for electric vehicle. Uh, which is another one of those, which is almost a hundred percent grant, um, very little on our end of things. But um, I believe that Jose was going to do, yeah, uh, or have information available with everything that the energy committee is doing currently. Um, yeah, I saw they want to put in a solar array uh, for the. Uh, transfer station is that would power these charging stations? Is that right? Uh, I don't think that's because they already put a solar array in there. Yeah, it's all in. It's all in and running. Oh, yeah. and There's a solar array system in there, a joint venture between the town of Bethel and the town of Royalton that is at the 
transfer station. Um, but they have been looking at buildings, you're right, and they looked at the fire department here, and different this, places to put in solar panels. I don't know what came up that time. This better connection grant with the Energy Committee, we had put money aside in last year's budget for the same grant. And one, they didn't receive the grant last year, but two, we got confused with how much money we needed to set aside, and we only set aside 50% of the match, so we put $3,500 in it last year, which if they would have gotten the grant last year, we would have been short. We thought some, of those, some grants, we have to have the matching funds right up front, and this one happened to be a matching fund right up front grant, so if they would have gotten it last year, we wouldn't have had the matching funds um, to have that grant. But they didn't, they didn't end up getting it. They've uh, reapplied for this year. Um, and, you know, if they get it, then, like last year, they didn't end up spending the money. So it'll be the same this year if they don't get it. Um. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a planning grant. Um, and I believe it's, it's for the, the multimodal. Yeah, it's with B Trends. That's what I was, the, the only paperwork I spent on it. Uh, I, mean, I need to specifically on it here. I, but I think, like I said, the energy committee is going to be at the town meeting too. There's, uh, there's a couple other things that are in here, um, and they'll also be on the warning that's in here as well, Lucian. The um, one's under the Con Conservation Commission, and the other one is under uh, reappraisal fund. So the Conservation Commission each year, if you went back through the prior year budget, you would see that we, we do have a line item each year for the Conservation Commission, um, which in the past, I believe it's $2,500 that we um, give them as a committee each year um, to work on uh, certain projects. The difficulty with that, again, is if we, if we give the Conservation Committee $2,500, and they don't use it by June 30th, then, then it, it goes away. Um, or in some cases, let's say they do have a project that they want to do, but it's going to take them two years to do it. They can't transfer that money from one year to the other. So that's why we've asked to, um, to designate a fund to them so that if we if we lock them $2,500 and, and they see that they want to do a project but they want to wait three years to collect their money to do it, then, then it's given, again, it's doing that bell curve and not one year they ask for $7,500 and next year zero, you know, type thing. Um, and we're actually kind of in the process of working on a, um, a conservation uh, land agreement, you know, that kind of would work on that same fund. Um, so we just want, they want to be able to have a fund established so that they can use money when they need it, not necessarily say, oh, I've got to find something just to spend it on this year. Um, and, and then, Therese, do you want to talk just a little bit on the reappraisal the fund? The reappraisal fund. So, which we did have. created a capital fund a few years ago for the um, Act 60 money. So <clears throat> all we're saying is to just start bolstering that because, you know, at some point you're going to need a town-wide reappraisal mm -hmm. and um, sooner possibly than later, and it's going to cost you a couple hundred grand and you don't have that, the money set aside to do it. So the good thing to do is to, obviously, is to increase what Act 60 is giving us. And, and then the good thing is, you know, if you enter into a contract with someone, it's probably going to take them a couple of years, so hopefully we'd have our down payment, our first few years of payments. And, and just trying to, you know, budget for it. The thing too, Lucia and I should say about having capital funds, and certainly the town I came from, we had some pretty well-established capital funds. It's nice because we ended up borrowing from ourselves instead of getting a tax anticipation note, so we'd borrow from ourselves and pay those funds interest, so there's other bonuses for that. But, um, you know, with a reappraisal fund, it's, you know, that's all in, in my opinion, not a lister. <coughs> and you're getting to the point where you need to have, you're going to need a town-wide reappraisal, you know, because it seems like you have a lot of 
this in property values would be nice to kind of just redistribute them amongst where it needs to go. So I think you'll be seeing it in a few years. And, and again, and unfortunately, it's one of those... there's limited companies that do townwide reappraisals, so it's certainly it's more expensive than it, than it has been in the past. And it's one of those items that we haven't been budgeting for that we should have been putting a little bit aside each year for. Because, I mean, what are they on like, a 10, 12 year cycle, something like that? Well, I mean, it's driven by the state, it depends yeah. on. You know, a couple of factors on 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 what your. What did you have our last <laughs> one in Bethel? Oh, um, I can't remember. Someone has said Anybody that. Anybody know? Well, it's, it's been more than ten years. Ten years. I thought it was thinking two thousand. Yeah, but it's something that we should have been. Yeah, four. 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 Somewhere yeah. early. So it's you know so by the time you start looking at the factors of. You know your three-year sales imperatives and, and those sorts of things it will tell you and the state has certain mandates too if a certain numbers at a certain percent they're, they're expecting you to do a town and again we're just trying to limit those peaks and valleys on the budget yeah, yeah. just trying to get to that bell curve yeah. um, anybody have anything else uh, on either the listers or the government operations I just had a question on Red Cross Who's in charge of that now? In Bethel. At the recreation? No, no, the Red Cross the shelter. There's no one. Oh, we need all the budget the money for? I think it's all. No, no because the only reason I say that is a different thing. I'll take his emotion in a second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Right. No, well, I, I looked at it for probably six yeah, months and worked on it. I, tell that, I said, we need to find somebody. Yeah, and we full time to do it. We but have nobody does it. And the reason I asked is it's a different entity now. Like when I went in to do the local emergency management plan with the new school board and all that, it's all completely different. Hmm. It, the, the, the agreements aren't the same. You're not dealing with the Bethel school board anymore. So that's just something that somebody should be appointed to and follow through on before something happens. Because it's not just the Bethel now, it's the whole supervisory union, White River Valley, it's a, it's a little complicated. Well, maybe, maybe the mission you had it. Maybe we can have Rick add that to his yeah, uh, mission at town meeting, would be, as well as the yeah. transfer facility. I mean, we, we all know from us, because we never did get anything. Carla did a great job, and Carla's not doing it anymore, so. But the paper end of it, I just don't want it see the town, okay, we got to open the Red Cross shelter, and now it's not just the local, it's... There's also been a lot of changeover at the Red Cross themselves. Right. The little bit of time that I, the six months that I was looking at it, I think I talked to four or five different people, different layers, and no, they're not doing this anymore, and now you have to talk to this one, a regional one, and this is a New England one. And, and in the way I see it, it's going to be we call it the Red Cross shelter, but it's really the Bethel shelter. Right. You know, we're going to have to take care of it ourselves. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, you may get some supplies of something catastrophic, <coughs> but other than that, you know, if we need it short term, God forbid something happened to the old folks home or something, and we need it, it's going to be on us. But right. that path isn't very smooth right now with the school. That's good. We'll yeah. Talk something worth looking into yeah. before it happens right in our face. Right. I mean, I think they'll be very cooperative. I don't see any issues. It's just not just the local now, it's the whole. Yeah, yeah we put in the of LA and Beale, so. Yeah. We did. Did we update it? Yeah, I met over, well, we're okay, because we did it. But when I went, where we were having trouble was the only contact information we had for the school was the school's number. Uh, and if there's any kind of emergency, that doesn't work. Yeah, right, yeah. So interesting, <coughs> I met, went and met with the board, and it, it was interesting because now you're dealing with another whole town that really doesn't have anything to do with our right. LEMP. Right. And, and there was questions, you know, like they said, well, why, why would we care? And they said, well, if there's any kind of issue with the school, if you're a school board member, wouldn't you rather know what's going on instead of having people start calling you and you go, I don't know. Right. And they all were on board 100%. And they actually were going to 
I mean, Bethel is one of the few that's got theirs done in the state. So they actually enacted it so South Royalton would be the same. But I see the same thing happening with the shelter. Is it's, it's now a union school, not just us. So right. I think as long as there's clear communication. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we can bring it up at the town meeting. Yeah. So I'm interested. And again, uh, you got to do a change for the facility as well. Well, we're definitely lacking on volunteers currently for different positions. So. I think if you can get one person to spearhead it, but as Paul found out, is, I, I don't even know as if I would mess with the Red Cross as much as well. The problem as is prepared. the problem is if you if you go under their umbrella, they'll walk in one day and say, "Okay, we're taking over," you know. But in the meantime, that those first few couple of days before they show up is where we're hurt. You know, where we don't have the organization to be able to keep the thing going to start it up. It may take them a couple, three days to, to show up with their troops. Right, the only way they're gonna show up is if it's another hurricane, I read. Right, right. Anything small. But your center has to, co right. has to conform to their rules and regulations right down, bing, 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 bing. So and Paul's right that they're struggling. Mm -hmm. The Red Cross is yeah. themselves. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. Well, the other thing I was going to say before I call these back is I hope that the <coughs> Weber Valley Ambulance representative for Bethel, whoever that is, shows up because two years in a row there's just been general questions and no one can answer them. And it fell on me and I had no idea. Right. So that would be, I was going to tell Rick and I did. Who is, is Neil still? It's Neil. Can, there, can you reach out to Neil and just make sure he's in attendance if, if able to? And <coughs> I mean, they're, they're still pursuing in Randolph. Pardon? They're still pursuing another option in Randolph, was in the paper there last week. They're looking at changing their ambulance uh, association. Well, the long and the short of it, camera or not, is. Randolph doesn't want to pay the same as everybody else. They they want to pay half the price and have the rest of the towns <coughs> absorb their costs. But they also have the biggest shares, the most calls. Uh, and from what I've seen in the background, to get another ambulance company to come down, how, what's going to be any different? You're going to have to have two ambulances, right. the costs. I don't think at the end of the day the costs will be much different if they pursue no. something else. We've got just always a casting point to try to get in. Mm. And, well, and as the, Warrior the, Valley the, holds the ground, how is it fair to every other town? Right now, every town pays the same per person. So why is it, you know, why do you let somebody else pay less and then the rest of the towns absorb a higher cost? Right. Yeah, and we had that conversation. I called Steve Webster to find out. We were trying to put a number in here. That's why you're, the warning says up to a specific amount because their budget wasn't complete and we were, I was very concerned about Randolph, if they pull out, what, you know, I said, we're from, you know, yeah. what's it going to do with us? And they're on, they're on a calendar year here. budget. Where we're, me, calendar they have a calendar year budget. Yeah, exactly. Where we're so, and I've been sending you this stuff. Anyways. Yeah. I mean, if you read your town report and under the Warrior Valley section, the amount of calls, yeah. I mean, they're hands down more than almost all the rest of the towns put together. You know, they are the biggest user of the system. Yeah. So, cross that bridge when you get there. Uh, let's see. Uh, appropriations was pretty much level funded from the year prior. And human services is up a tad. Anything you want to speak on human services and things today? Uh, no, just where we had the usual uh, numbers of applicants. There were three that um, either didn't apply or uh, requested, <coughs> uh, or didn't either didn't uh, request any money or said that they weren't going to uh, request money this year, but they would like to stay in the 
on the list for future uh, requests. And we had a couple, I think there were two in here that we actually gave a little bit more to. And it's all based on, it's, there's a lot of numbers that it's based on, their financials, but the bottom line is how do, how do they impact the actual residents of the town of Buffett? Uh, we asked them for specific numbers. How many people in Bethel does your agency uh, help? And, and uh, that's, a, that's a real critical part of the whole thing. We have some that are countywide or statewide agencies that don't really have a big impact on Bethel residents per se, but there are some that, that are all Bethel residents. And then the, like the, uh, the senior centers, um, the after-school programs, things like that have a real big impact on Bethel residents. So they get a little more consideration. And then we try to balance it with the budget too. We don't want to go crazy with the spending. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit that goes into the consideration of each one. I just had one more question myself at the end here on this uh, one point four four million dollar debt and the payments that we have to make on it. Uh, Teresa, if you don't mind me saying, uh, Teresa told me that she had recommended to the board that you have a twenty year term on that note, yep. and, and the board decided on a twenty five year term. You know how I. Didn't have time to come to this meeting to figure it out, but do you know how much more interest we're going to have to pay? I um, can't remember. We did have it calculated out and we talked about it. And the, other, the thing that the board did say was because it was a tight payment and at the time, you know, we were starting to do this, we were renewing that note in November, so we had we weren't full into budget, so they wanted a little wiggle on one of the things they did say, we can see how the budget looks next year, and maybe we budget a principal payment to try to, you know, offset the difference. And, um, but I did have all the numbers at one point, but I don't have them with me, Lucian. Obviously, it was more, but, and, um, but we actually had a good discussion about it. <coughs> because it was tough in November, no one with the crystal ball, we had started budgets, but we weren't ready to make a big decision. So, but they did say that, and so we kind of asked them to put that in minutes, and it was in the minutes that, you know, future boards might be willing to make, uh, you know, payments on the principal. It was a it was a tough uh, decision at that point. Again, we had to make the decision prior to getting our budget done. Um, and uh, it, I believe if we would have went with a twenty year note, it would have increased this year's taxes by another penny. Okay, um, yeah, you're probably right. Would have been the so I don't have the long term interest. Mm -hmm. The one thing is that the. Um, the note that we did take out on it that we can make it we can make advance payments at any time on a principal without penalty so um, i guess the way we were looking at it as um, short term it would benefit the town by a penny on the rate um, however if we do get into some instances where we have some undesignated fund balance at the end of the year the next year we could appropriate some of it um, or if we have a year where you know, the budget's looking good we can always put some extra money aside to it so there's some good options because not all the time when you take out a note like that actually quite often when you take out a note like that there will be um, penalties to, yeah, to make extra payment on the principal yeah. so it was actually a good uh, what we've got in that so yeah we negotiated it but i don't know what the the total oh, interest would be over the i do have it right here the total interest? I don't like it. So it looked like, um, let's see, it looked like 20, yeah, the 20 year was 497,577. The 25 year was 629, 639.47. So interest. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that versus 30 years. So I can say that. <laughs> what was the difference on the um, 20 to 25? The payments, yeah. Oh, the payment went from um, 82. Nine to ninety-seven. So, so fifteen. So it would have been just just less than a penny on the yeah. tax rate. So. And like if we were early in the process. So, but but the good so, news. So, so what is the difference in in, in the interest? In the uh, so six twenty-nine, six minus four ninety-seven five. 
So it's like 132. Yeah. 32. Yeah. 32. yeah. Oh, okay. So, but if they're, you know, if you can make payments on the okay. principal, then yeah. So. All right. Anything else? Government operations, uh, human services. The uh, we did see that the. Well, we did see for quite a few years in a row, I want to say it was three or four years in a row, that we didn't really see any adjustments to the White River Valley Ambulance. Uh, last year, if I remember right, last year was a 5% increase. Does that sound right from last year? Last year's budget, or the current year's budget. And then this year, they had gone up. Uh, again, it's, it's complicated because we're, we're, we're on a physical year. Um, you know, from July 1st to June 30th, they're on a calendar year budget. So trying to um, budget in some of their perceived increased costs for the later six months, um, I guess we've taken a bit of a conservative view Right, because we weren't sure that we talked not about Not knowing exactly what the... I think we did 3% maybe, because at the time, you know, they just have that weird, it's not like the same amount each month. On top of it, right. And then they up it, and at the time, we, we're not really sure, so we, that's why the warning says up to because it's less. The likelihood is that it'll be less than the number that's printed there, but. Well, now, you know, honestly, we could take a look. I've been warning you that stuff in the budget, uh, the, the emails that I get from them. We should look and see what their final numbers we may be able to make them all the more of them reduce that. Yeah. I remember years and years ago when Dell wanted to make a change in the fiscal year. <laughs> And it created a lot of confusion. And in the confusion, the budget really went up. <laughs> well, it would be difficult because a lot of your funding that you get from, you well, know, not a lot, but you get funding from the state and identities like that that are on a physical year. So if you did go to calendar year, then you would be playing that game on your revenue on. It's weird to see How does that revenue fit into your, on your year now budget? Now everybody's on a fiscal year because you stay in school, you know, everything. Right. So oh, yeah. That would be that'd be a wild ride. The debt services, you'll see that there was quite a bit of changes there, just on on the retirement of certain um, debt. Last year we had last year we had to not only make our first payment, but we also had to pay our our last interest payment from the previous note. So we were. If I remember right, the interest only was like twenty thousand dollar payment mm -hmm. that we had to make. Yep. Um, so that was less on this year. Plus, um, we paid down this year on the note to bring it from the one point mm -hmm. seven to the one point four. We finally we got all of our money from FEMA, so we put all that money towards it. So, right. but yeah, so the payment dropped. Which we said last year we said it was going to drop, so we paid off the sewer note. So all in all, the, <coughs> but this is where we moved that debt financing. It didn't make sense to have it. Works, but the, the, it's down 20%, but it's because we paid off the bond. Well, Teresa, you told me about that one point four four that you got a three percent for a certain number of years, and yep. after you, a few years, you can review it. Yep, yep. Right. They gave us a three percent for ten years, and then and they said, you know, then they're good to us. They'll monitor the uh, rates if they see it. You know, they could. Um, freeze it for us, and if for some reason we ran into a pile of cash, we could buy it. We could put some down on the principal, and then you know we'll see what the, the amount is to refinance. Could you again. change the term at that point and shorten it? At the ten year, sure. Yeah, you can yeah. refinance yeah. it at yeah. ten. Because that would be really worthwhile. One hundred thirty-two thousand dollars more in uh -huh. interest, you know. That's a lot. Yeah, I mean we have we have some flexibility with it. We can yeah. we can pay extra principal. Payments towards it, and then at ten years, then we could refinance it if the. And it's hard too because you have so many unknowns with if you're going to do the, um, or when you're going to do a, a new highway, you know, public works building, and you're waiting for the water um, sewer, you know, master plan to come in, and there's still a lot of moving parts to figure out how, you know, how do you pay for everything and not impact taxes all at the same time. So I just wanted to, uh, to sum it up with the budget, uh, going through the numbers. Overall, if, um, the cost the cost on this budget's up $39,269 from year over year. Uh, at the same time, our revenue source is down 19310 
So the net difference to the town of Bethel is 58,579, uh, which based on, based on using, um, uh, is, is just under three cents. So it's 2.98 or 2.99 for round out. So that's where uh, we're at right now. But if the actual expenses were at one, one point, one point six six, could you <clears throat> until we get the grand list? Well, I mean, the grand list is probably, well, the grand list isn't going up. It's, it's going to go down by a little bit. So, yeah. Um, that's based on using, I used, that number was just slightly under last year's grand list. Because so, so I think last year's grand list was like 1962 or or something like that. I just use 1960. Pretty close. Yeah, I don't see any growth in What's happened with that large uh, previous Vermont Castings facility? I take it that it's empty, is that right? No. I, it's not a, it's no. The castings is still in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't, right, I don't think, limited, but they're still in there. So, I don't think that building's being used 100%. From what I understand, they'll use them like 20 or 30% of the building. Uh, I, I hear there's only 20 employees in there. Oh, yeah. okay. So, we haven't taken a hit on the grand list because of that. Mm -hmm. the, no. the, the value going down. Or oh, okay. It's, it's always a possibility. Yeah. I, I see where you're getting at. But, yeah. No, no, not currently. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Anybody have any thank questions? You. Thank you. Thanks. Last yeah, questions on question. any of the budget? cost or revenue. Hearing none. And we'll move on. That's crazy. Thank you, Teresa. Thanks, Teresa. We have the uh, select board meeting minutes from the 11th. <laughs> Paul's giggling over here. Uh oh. Well, no, we have a reputation on the select board you know, that we have to maintain. Yeah. But I've never heard it put that we have we have an attitude. The last line on the first page. It says Maggard acknowledges that the water commit as water commissioners they have some attitude in <laughs> making a decision of stuff. <laughs> latitude. <laughs> latitude. A little attitude then. Okay. Well, I don't know. I, I feel like some days I have some attitude. <laughs> 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 Maybe it was well, I have some attitude. Yeah. 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 So. I think it's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stand by his statement. Well done. <laughs> They out because they some have attitude. Yeah, don't implicate all of us in this. You missed one earlier in that though, Paul. What was that? Uh, it could have been. Uh, two, two lines blank like rich. Two lines. Uh -oh. Not being said. I believe that should be bad being said. Oh, yeah. Okay, wait. No more cribbage for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were playing cribbage. No. Oh. I, I just organized the thing. I don't play. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of strange. How's that work? <laughs> Not well. I get to sit there for four hours. Yeah. Playing and you playing never it. win. It's playing weird. judge and jury. <laughs> His wife wins enough. Yeah, she, yeah. she was the one that kind of got, got me into uh, it. I see. All right. So where is it? Here, Annie. I'm the first Oh, that being said, okay. I would entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes of the 11th as amended. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Uh -huh. Latitude. I don't know, but I thought that was right. Mo, uh, Mo made the motion. Then we second it. Oh. Okay. Approved as amended. Yep, said. correct. Yeah. All right, we had the full brochures. Yep. So we're, we're trying to get this rent. We want to have it for uh, coming day. We're also going to have a price on the table and all that kind of thing. We've already started our uh, sign-ups for classes and things like that early. And a lot of people that are interested, actually. So 
just kind of give you some information. See anything that looks that looks you know incorrect or, or wrong? Uh, definitely let me know. Although it's a little late, it's already printed. <laughs> Too late. But it's going to be another successful year, I really think. She's already lined out all the the family fun nights and got all the talent and everything all ready to do. So. I hear you volunteered me as a judge. Yes, I did. Yes. Is that all okay. told? <laughs> yeah, I was voluntold. <laughs> we'll give you I mean, more I get to judge food. I guess yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Mo, can you know that we're going to increase Emily's comp, comp time? Uh, I don't think we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the food is my payment. That's good. So, yeah, you. just take a look. If you see anything that, that needs to change or whatever, let me know. We'll, we'll make a note for next time. But, um, like I said, she's, been, she's already got a lot of people that are ready to sign up. There are people driving from out of, out of town. That told her they're going to be there on town meeting day to sign up for classes. So it's, it's very good. a good great job. We had um, Solid Waste Board, Matt. Yeah, that was from the December 12th. Yeah. If you notice that, uh, yeah, 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 one we just had. And I think maybe, I don't know what you think, but should we announce something in town meeting day about needing somebody just to fill that board? Board member? That board's incomplete right now. We're, yeah. we're short one and we're open too. Are you? Yeah. Oh, you are? So it equalizes. It kind of works, but it's, it's not a full board either way. Not a full board. Yeah. yeah. So it's up to you guys if you want to announce that we're, we're still taking, uh, we'll take the applications for that open position. But we've had it posted for two weeks and I've got no response. I mean, I think. I think that's a responsible thing to do, is, yeah. is to make an announcement. Yeah. I think your, your better opportunities are at town meeting days. I don't want to, I don't want to label everybody, but more of your responsible citizens do come out for town meeting goals. day, and they're probably more apt to want to be part of your committee. Yeah. Um, than relying on someone reading the paper. No, I agree. Those people that really want to be involved in one way or another. Things. I wonder if somehow if you could maybe just get a quick little write-up of, you know, these are all the open positions that we have, and if some way either we could have a, a pamphlet so printed up and people could, could grab it and come in and look to see if there's yeah. something that sure. maybe... We need rec people, you know, rec right. board, energy board. Then someone could come in and say, hey, oh, I wouldn't mind being on the rec I like board. Mo's you know? idea of have a page that goes on every seat. People sit there or and Or when you register to get a lot of it. Huh? It's a lot of ink. Or, or just give them out, give them out no, there no, to get their badges. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's what I can do. Yeah, because we're a little half sheet. Yeah. We all have to register to get in there. Just to sure. yeah. Yep. That's a, yeah, that'd be a good place for it right there. Hand it out. Yeah. 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 Just give everybody yeah. that registers them. And just throw on there all the positions we have available. Yep. If they don't like it, they can rip it up and use it when we vote. I mean, probably every committee could probably use that. Oh, right. Yeah, we never have too many. So. Yeah, you're right. Just we never have too many. many. Use one, so. Okay. I Plus the ones we know about. You want me, uh, do you want to know what we've been doing down there to the uh, transfer station? Sure. Well, we, uh, this last meeting, if you haven't seen the minute, uh, our single sort compactor pretty much on its last legs. If it gets below 30 degrees, it won't work out thing. So uh, we've got a new one coming for $20,000, which we had budgeted for last year, but we haven't spent it yet. So. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, as you throw your trash in, the truck sitting there, and you're throwing their body, the motor went on that. Mm -hmm. So we've ordered a, it's a, uh, it's a great big bucket, you know, so you slide your forks into it like that. You know, just like what they have for whatever. Just a bin. But anyways, that was cost us uh, $2,900. And that was cheaper than rebuild, rebuilding the motor on the truck. So, so it's just a bin and then it's a bin around the forks mm -hmm. on the... Yeah, it's like a 12 yard. You know, six yards, which is more than a dump truck. Six, yeah. So you won't have to bring it over all the time. Huh? Exactly. Like the other one. Mm -hmm. But it, that was cheaper than fixing the motor on the... On the well, that truck was... Old. It was an 82. Yeah. <laughs> it just broke in. Yeah. It sounds like he wants to buy it. And it was free to us. Can the highway department borrow it? So, we put a plow for it. A question for you, Mo. I, yeah. I think I've asked you before. I noticed when I'm doing the payroll that the uh, 
since um, you're down one, the guy that retired. Yeah, Roger, uh, yeah. Roger retired. Yeah. And so the hours for the other folks that are working there are just 187 hours, you know. Uh, that was, some of that was when uh, so the manager was The chat was ill for a while. They were, too, but are they looking at, you're looking at uh, filling that position? Again, I noticed yeah, that yeah. minutes yeah. said he may not need paper. to do that. It was a big thing last okay. week for, okay. for an employee. Because okay. that, some of those hours are just... Well, th th there's, I can't get into that, but there's, yes. there's, a, there's a reason for that. It's not very logical, but it, or it did. Okay. And actually, uh, according to the, uh, to the, to our, uh, Iraq agreement, we're supposed to be uh, going over the uh, warrants for the for, for the sale, you know, the town of Bethlehem. That has never been followed. Yep. It's supposed to, according to the interlock agreement, it's supposed to be like we do here, it's supposed to be agreed upon by by our board, yep. and then brought up for the town clerk to the town treasurer to write cut checks. Yep. Any other business? Dave? Um, I would like to uh, ask the board to consider waiving the uh, pool fee for the one day elementary school event at the pool of this year. It's uh, not a lot of money, but money that wasn't budgeted. And they just got the new fees in, in and presented to Andrew what that was going to be and they're something they've done with the kids for several years and it's never cost anything. And uh, kind of came as a surprise. And I would like to ask if we could bring that be for this year. And I think part of the reasoning behind that is, is you know, they weren't prepared for it, plus they don't charge us anything to use the facility for town meeting. So it's kind of a, you know, kind of a trick on a little bit there. Town meeting, voting, any, any uh, other Yeah, as well as other things, yeah. Uh, I think it was, what, 300 and something? 375. Yeah. Yeah. Based off of our new yeah. group rate that we charge, it's $3 per ten. Sounds like a good trade-off to me. Yeah, yeah no problem. That's yeah. Yeah. And then we can revisit it another year. Then I'm specifically saying this year. <coughs> They know that it's going to be there. They can put in their budget for another year. Mm -hmm. Do we need a motion? Or yeah. From the board? Uh, I would like to have one just for the time. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. <coughs> entertain a motion to um, waive the fee for the school's spring uh, day at the pool. So okay. move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Does that balance their budget now? <laughs> Get the whole thing. That make up all half a million dollars or be in the year? By God. Well, it's a start. Milton's just a dollar. I'm shocked. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, it's going to be a fun day. Um, let's see. I'll entertain a motion to enter executive session. Yeah, minutes from the uh, oh, did conservation, I conservation Commission. Oh. Conservation Commission minutes. That's part of the solid waste stuff. Any discussion in regards to the Conservation Commission meeting minutes? Any other business? Those minutes basically reflect what Mayor Kane told us last meeting, right? Good portion of that. Pretty close. I'll entertain a motion to enter executive session. Personal so moved. matters. So moved. Second. 